True Automotive based out of Denver, Colorado. Today we are going to be working on a 2018 Toyota Tundra. We're going to be starting with a Dobinson suspension. We're also going to be installing some Method wheels and some Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Please look forward for the details. After that we will be working on some performance products for this truck as well. Alright, so the first step on this process of kind of updating this truck is going to be taking the TPMS sensors out of the factory wheels and then basically installing them into the method wheels, ensuring that there is no dash light or tire pressure light on the dash. done with the tires we're gonna go ahead and move on to the suspension we're gonna be replacing this factory um, strut with the Dobbinson Nitro um, spring and strut assembly we do opt to have these fully assembled so it comes with a new top hat and look forward to details on that so to start on the suspension overhaul we're gonna loosen the 24 millimeter lower cam bolts just to be able to get this arm out of the way once those are loosened we're gonna remove the knuckle bolts to let this kind of fall down after we remove the bottom suspension bolt. So now that we have the 24 millimeter um, lower cam bolts loosened, we are gonna remove the 22 millimeter bolt on the sway bar, and now we're gonna work our way to the 24 millimeter lower shock, and then the uh, lower knuckle bolts to get this to drop down, and then unbolt the 14 mils, I believe, up top to lower the shock out. This is what I was talking about, right? So after you get the sway bar bolt out, the lower shock bolt out, the knuckle bolt out, your lower control arm will do this. And what that does is that gives you and frees up a lot of space for you to slide this shock out once you remove those 14 millimeter top nuts. So now that everything is out on the driver's side, we're gonna throw in the Dobinson Nitro shock. And like Austin was saying earlier in the video, they opt to get these assembled. That way you guys aren't compressing the spring, taking top hats off your old struts and putting them on here. Everything comes ready to go. So now that you pulled the old one out, we can just throw this one in, put the uh, four 14 mils up top to hold it in place and basically reverse what we did before to take it out. So now that we have this set in place, what Dylan did was put the 14 millimeter nuts up top to hold the shock in place so he doesn't have to hold on to it. And then put the lower shock bolt through the lower control arm to hold that up. And then we'll basically start doing the knuckle and tightening up the top and the bottom. And then we'll tighten up the cam bolts, but it also has to do an alignment. So probably where it's at. Quick little trick for you guys, if you're trying to get these lower knuckle bolts in and you can't get them in, take a big old pry bar, wedge it between on top of the upper control arm and the tower, and you can actually push it down to get the knuckle and the arm where you need it to be, like Dylan's doing right now. So there's this side pretty much buttoned up so everything is tight. Um, quick little tip for you guys is these sway bar bolts are easier to put in and get on there when the truck is on the ground. Um, you can tighten and torque the lower knuckle bolts, but you don't want to torque the lower shock unless it's a heim. Um, so wait till the truck is actually on the ground. So it's, it's relatively tight, but we're not going to torque this down until we actually put the truck on the ground and same with these guys. Everything else is good to torque down though, but this will make the truck sit how it's supposed to and then you can align it and torque everything down. And just like that, both sides are done. So we did the exact same thing on this side that we did the other side. Um, start with the sway bar, lower bolts, and then the knuckle bolts, top bolts, pull it out, new one in, reverse the process, and you're good to go. So now that we're to the rear, step one, 
is going to be to support the rear axle. Reason being is because we're going to be taking what holds it up right now out, right? So we're going to be taking out and replacing the leaf packs and the rear shock. Um, start by taking out the old rear shock. We'll pull the old leaf pack out, put the new leaf packs in, and then put the new shocks in, and we'll show you guys how that all goes. So once you guys have your rear axle supported, you have 17 millimeter on the top and a 17 millimeter on the bottom. Go ahead and remove both of those, and then we're gonna go in under and do the leaf packs for the U-bolts. So when you get to the U-bolts uh, here for the leaf packs, these are gonna be a 19 millimeter. Go ahead and remove those. This plate should drop. You're able to take those off, remove the bump stop, and now we're gonna go have access to the bolts on the shackle over here, which we're gonna replace with the Dobbins and stuff, and then kinda of go from there. To give yourself a little bit more room, you can go ahead and remove this little 12 millimeter bolt here for the parking brake line, or for the brake lines. So we're at the stage now where everything is disconnected, everything is off. So what we're gonna do is lower the rear axle so we can actually get some room to work on pulling off these leaf packs. Just make sure you check your brake lines as you do so because that is the only thing holding this side of this axle in right now. So we wanna make sure we're not getting too much pressure and too much pull on those brake lines. Quick recap while everything is out. Remove this little 12 millimeter, stick it back in there so you don't lose it. Uh, to release some tension on these lines here, you're gonna remove the back hanger and then the front bolts, both 19 millimeters and remove the shock obviously as well. So one issue that we ran into is that the bushings for the new shackles don't fit like they're supposed to, but if you put the sleeve on the old shackle bolts and then the bushing on there, it fits like it's supposed to. So what we're gonna do is use the factory shackle with the sleeves and put the bushings on those. Fits much better. So with the OEM shackles going back in, you're gonna have two sets of um, bushings. So you're gonna have the longer bushing go on the back in between here and on the outside for the longer part of the shackle. And then the shorter bushings are gonna go on the front of the leaf up here. So what Dylan did was we put in the front bolt of the leaf pack in. Again, you don't tighten that down or torque that down. Same with the rear until it's actually on the ground. You can torque down the U-bolts when we get to that part though. So now that we got the front leaf bolt and rear hangers on, again, do not torque that front leaf bolt or the rear hanger bolts until the truck is on its own weight on the ground. Go ahead and put your bump stop back in. Uh, I do recommend upgrading your bump stop if you are lifting your truck, just because this is gonna be almost useless now if you ever need it. Um, you'll use the Dobinson provided U-bolts with the Dobinson provided uh, hardware here. The trick here is to put one on a corner and put one on the opposite corner to hold it up, then make it all of them as even as possible and then torque them all down. Once you guys have your bump stop and u bolt back on, uh, we're gonna go to the rear shock. So basically we're doing reverse. So put the new shock in where the old shock was. Another thing to keep in mind, make sure if you're buying a different leaf pack or different kit, um, make sure it comes with the U-bolts. You don't wanna reuse old U-bolts because they actually stretch. They're not really reusable. So make sure if you're getting new leaf packs, you also get new U-bolts. So you don't have to do this part, but we cut off the excess of these U-bolts so they're not quite as low, so you have better clearance. So it's rear shock time now. So leaf packs all buttoned up, everything's tight except for the front leaf pack bolt up here and the rear shackle. Again, make sure you torque that down when it's on the ground. What Dylan has done is put the lower shock bolt through and then disconnect or cut the uh, cord there that holds it all compressed. So it'll extend out and hopefully go all the way up to where we need it to go. If not, then we have to raise it up just a little bit. So now that the rear shock is in, you can tighten up the top nut up here but not the bottom again until it's 
on its own weight on the ground. Trick to doing this so the shock doesn't spin is there's a little like channel up on top of the strut and you hold that with a, another wrench or pliers and then tighten that nut as you do so so it prevents the shock from actually just spinning. And there you guys have it. Everything that's supposed to be tight is now tight. You can see you use that little paint up there. So that way, if, if that paint breaks, you know something's loose. Again, don't tighten the front or rear of the leaf pack and the lower shock bolt until it is on the ground. But repeat the process that you did on this side, on the other side, and then we'll be ready to put it on the ground. Front and rear shocks are all in. So front shocks, rear shocks, and rear leaf springs all in. We're gonna torque down the wheels, get it ready to throw on the alignment rack. Once we're ready and on the ground, we're gonna torque everything down. So the sway bar, the uh, leaf packs, the lower bolts, all that fun stuff will be torqued down here in a minute. And then it's time for an alignment. Now that the truck is standing on its own weight here, Dylan's gonna go through and torque everything that we mentioned to torque once the truck is on the ground. So the rear leaf pack uh, shackles, as well as the front bolt for the leaf pack, and then the lower shock uh, bolt for the rear, and the front shock bolt for the bottom. So this is why you always do an alignment after doing new suspension or lift on your rig because as you can see, everything here is in the red. We wanna make sure everything is in the green so that the truck actually drives how it's supposed to drive. So we highly recommend if you guys are doing a lift and you're doing it at home, make sure to schedule an alignment as soon as possible, same day preferably. Um, do, we do not recommend driving it if you don't have it aligned. Drive it to the shop and that's about it. Alright guys, we're wrapping up on the 2018 Tundra. As you can see, it's definitely sitting quite a bit higher. We were able to complete the suspension, wheel and tire package. It looks amazing. Please stay tuned for episode two where we kind of dive into the performance side of this truck. That's where things really get interesting.